I sang that song for more than 60 years, a song of praise to Joseph Smith, the prophet of the Restoration and founder of the LDS Church, the church I served as a bishop for five years. I knew the church was true. I was a faithful Latter-day Saint. My life has been built on certain truths, but wishing doesn't change the truth. Jesus said, you shall know the truth, and the truth will make you free. When I finally learned the truth about the real history and doctrines of Mormonism, I realized that I was following the gospel of Joseph Smith, and not the gospel of Jesus Christ. I have come to learn that many others have made a similar journey out of the bondage of religion and into an authentic relationship with Jesus. And that's what this show is all about. Courageous people who want to share their story, hoping that you, the viewer, will discover the same new life in Jesus. So if you're a Latter-day Saint who is struggling with questions or seeking a genuine encounter with the Savior, we invite you to join us tonight. We have a joyful message that we want to share with you. Good evening and welcome to the Ex-Mormon Files here in the heart of Salt Lake City. I'm your host, Bishop Earl. I appreciate you spending some of your evening with us. I'm really delighted tonight to welcome Suzanne Case. We've been good friends for a long time, and I appreciate you coming and sharing your story. Glad to be here. This will be exciting to hear, hear the details. <laughs> I don't know if it'll be exciting. <laughs> <laughs> but you were born in the church, right? Mm -hmm. Born in the covenant. And yes. Mm -hmm. Parents uh, active in the church, and you were active as a young family. And Well, my, um, I'm the youngest, and when I was born at that point, um, my dad wasn't going to church. Oh. And um, I remember going to primary, and I remember going to sacrament occasionally. Um, I remember pretty Easter dresses and Christmas dresses. Okay. Um, and my parents um, actually divorced when I was um, almost seven, and so my world went from oh. my mom and taking care of me and. It was just her and I. Um, the next sibling above me is um, seven years older than I am. Oh. I believe it's about seven. And um, so it was just me and her. And then when they um, divorced, we moved and mom was gone oh. and was working. Wow. And so, but at that point, um, we then went all the time. And um, I'm one of those people as a young child who loved Jesus. Yeah. Um, and it was Jesus that I believed in, so. That's interesting, and you say it that way, do you, did you sense that, that you believed in the Mormon Jesus or a different Jesus, do you think? Now, maybe looking back, looking you back, know. <laughs> Well, you know, looking back, um, I actually keep a picture of my um, Mormon baptism at eight um, in our office, and I do that simply because it reminds me that I really was just getting baptized because I love Jesus. Really? And um, I, I'm, I didn't have the mind. You'd, I, I don't know that really anyone does, um, but at eight years old, that's just, I just thought I was doing what Jesus wanted me to do. My goodness. And, um, and I loved the idea of um, a heavenly mother and a heavenly father. There was a book, and I, I cannot recall the name of it. I can see the cover of it, but it told about this whole, the whole plan yeah. and how I was, you'd be so excited to come here, and, um, and, and then... Heavenly Mother. Right, and, heavenly and you Father. had to come here yeah. so that um, you could um, work your way back yeah. to your Heavenly Father again. Was there so. a sense of pride that you were, mm. had, had been born into a Mormon family? Mm, probably not. That. Probably not. Yeah. Um, I didn't have any connection like that. Um, some of my earliest memories as far as um, just a, a belief and a faith was, again, this idea that um, my Heavenly Father loved me. And so there was a time when my mom had to go to the hospital, for example, and I was little, I don't know, nine. Um, it was after we'd moved um, up here and to Utah. And um, mom had something wrong, and I was so afraid she wasn't going to come back. And so 
what I do is I just pretended as a little child with imagination that I would sit in my Heavenly Father's lap. Because again, I had this oh understanding that my Heavenly Father loved me. And He loved me so much that so He would protect me. Um, wow. So as far as like a Mormon, uh, this last week I actually was reading um, in Scripture in First Samuel chapter 3 when, um, if you don't know the, the story of, um, or if the audience isn't all familiar with the story of, of Samuel, um, his mother couldn't um, have a child. Yeah, and she, she was barren, right? Right, yeah. and, and she prayed, and they'd go in, into the temple courts, and she would pray. And anyway, God gave her Samuel, and part of her prayer was that she would then return Samuel and, and give him to the Lord to do yeah. service. She promises she, him she, or something. She promises yeah. the Lord that. Yeah. And so she has Samuel, and, and Samuel, she returns Samuel after he's weaned, and he's um, there with Eli the priest, and there's uh, a knight, and it doesn't say how old it, he is, but his mother has come back to visit him a few times, so he's, you know, could be, you know, anywhere from nine, ten, somewhere like that. Yeah. But one night, the Lord, um, they, they lay down to sleep, and um, Samuel hears a voice, and yeah. he gets up, and he goes to Eli, and he says, here I am. And that happens three times. And... Um, Eli finally realizes, the priest, that this is God calling Samuel, because um, previous in the scripture it says that, that there had not been a lot of um, revelation, right? Yeah. And so he tells Eli, or he tells Samuel to go back, and the next time he hears it, to say, here I am, Lord. But in the midst of that scripture, it says, um, it says that, uh, now Samuel did not yet know the Lord. The word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. Wow. And that just really hit me this week. So here at your baptism, you feel Christ. When your mom's in the hospital, you feel like you're in right. Heavenly Father's lap. So you feel like God's been... Right, that, that, that there's been this call. That's beautiful. But, but you don't know the voice. Yeah. I didn't know the shepherd's voice. I, I loved... Jesus, yeah. but I didn't know him, and, and there's a difference. Wow. So as I look back and reflect, I've asked the Lord to show me places where he was um, and where it wasn't the enemy. And um, so, for example, I'm um, 12 and I get my ears pierced, and that was a really big deal. <laughs> and um, in more ways than, than I need to go into, but it was a big <laughs> deal. And I brought little crosses, you know, at the store, I went over and handed them to mom, that's what I want to, this is what I want, my, want ears. my ears pierced yeah. in, and she looked at me and she said, oh Susie, we don't believe in Jesus like that, and again, I'm 12, and I don't but know the what, cross that, meant something, but, but I didn't know that, why, yeah. well, I don't get this, right. I, he died on a cross, I, so there's those little moments, um, so when I, you, you say, do I, think of myself, or was I proud to be a Mormon? I, I didn't know that, I, I just thought I was following Jesus. I, I remember hearing a woman, I don't know, someone who had left the Mormon church, and this idea that if, if you're following Joseph, then perhaps um, your heart is harder, um, or has been hardened to where that's, you believe it's a man. But I just always believed in Jesus. So as I moved into my um, you know, the, the youth, the mutual. Yeah. I was the the my maid or the, the beehive president and um, a my maid president. Yeah. And then um, and, and I and at that time um, I can remember um, the prophet was um, President Kimball right. and being at the rededication of the uh, Logan Temple and but right up front, you know, yeah. and, and I just I just loved President Kimball. Yeah. Um, but then I, I would read the Bible as a young person, so now I'm probably about 14 or 15, and um, I, I loved the red letters, because those are Jesus' words, right? Yeah. And um, I couldn't find, I couldn't see where families were going to be forever in, in Jesus' words. You, you really thought those things as a 
as a teenager. As a teenager. Be well, Amazing. Because, <laughs> well, well, when you go to Mutual and everybody has a family and a mom and a dad and, and you don't, you mm -hmm. kind of feel like something's amiss. Yeah. And um, now they were married in the temple. They were married in the temple. Did they stay sealed or? Um, I, I think ultimately no. Oh, okay. um, mom remarried many, many, like twenty years later. But um, so it's those in those teen years that if I started to think through, okay, so my parents are how on how am I ever going to be with my heavenly father? Is it is it my immediate family? Or is it, oh, is this when I'm going to get married? And, yeah. and these are my thoughts just as a teenager. And then um, as a teenager, it bothered me a lot um, when I learned that blacks didn't have the priesthood. I didn't know they didn't, right? <laughs> so as a Mormon, you just think everybody, I, I think I think thought everyone was probably We're equal. Right. Yeah. And, and so that became bothersome when that all came out. Wow. Um, and then for whatever reason, I, I don't have a, I didn't go read anything I wasn't supposed to. In fact, even after leaving the church, it took me quite a while to even dare look at something. Look at something. <laughs> and then the irony was that it was all already Mormon doctrine yeah. that showed that it wasn't truthful. But I didn't, um, as a teenager, Joseph Smith just started getting really icky. I couldn't <laughs> icky. look at a picture. <laughs> And I know, icky, I did, don't. Did you ever talk to anybody about that? Not at, not at that point. Yeah. Um, and um, what other, those are kind of the primary three, three things. Well, that's really profound. I've never thought of the Samuel experience like that because God probably has done that in most of our lives, though, those of us that have come out, do you think, and have touched our hearts and lives in different ways we just but we didn't know his his voice right yeah, yeah I'm, I'm sure you if you think back yeah. there's times that God's calling and <laughs> so you you go to your bishop that's who's you know if you get yeah. a voice right well or something and telling you something you go talk to the bishop to get an answer or um, yeah, go to or, the church right yeah. um, and and if you spoke it out loud um, you were really a bad person, you know? <laughs> yeah. So. Okay, well, you, I know you eventually do talk to a bishop. What did he tell you about something? <laughs> well, well, I, again, in, in this journey, um, I wanted to do the right thing. Yeah. And so even um, once I got married, we didn't get married in the temple, um, but we took all the classes and it got down to it. And so again, I just think I'm supposed to pray. And, and what I hear is or what I don't understand and people can say well oh Suzanne you didn't have enough faith or yeah. oh you're rebellious no th that would not be a true statement because my desire was to be obedient yeah and I think there's a lot of people that desire to be obedient but when it got down to it um, I just again um, knowing that my Heavenly Father loved me uh, what is he doing in the a building in a temple so so I couldn't fathom that he's in this temple more than he is outside of it Wow. And then um, I couldn't grasp why he would want me to wear the garments. <laughs> and so we didn't go. <laughs> I, my poor husband, I just said, we're not going. <laughs> and we'll, we'll keep going to church. And, and maybe time, you know, people will say, well, it, uh, so the bishop would be, it, the answer is would, when I'd have these kind of, you know, questions I would go ask them and I was often told to well you know you just have to have more faith and um, just put that on a shelf and that question yeah. and as time goes on you'll be able to pull it back down and the puzzle below will be filled in but as time went on um, the shelf was full and there's nothing below and I can't pull the pieces back down because it doesn't fit yeah um, and, and so th that's just been my journey. I mean, when our oldest wanted to be baptized, I at this point w would talk to my mom about it. My mom at this point knew my, my um, struggles and my questions. Was that so, difficult for her? Or? Uh, sure, yeah. but, my, but that's it. See, I knew my Heavenly Father loved me, yeah. and I knew my mom loved me. Yeah. And so um, I would go to her, and she would... Um, 
she just I said I don't I don't want to baptize our, our oldest I don't understand she's eight what how does she have any choice or no or and I'd go back and forth and she's finally my mother said well then don't and I wow. and I said right mom <laughs> that'll go over really big yeah and so we baptized her and and that's a story I don't know if um, my husband Russell will want to share but she was dunked a whole lot that day and I felt like a voice I was in the back of the room and I felt like a voice was just screaming at me to stop it but you don't because yeah. you're supposed to do that and so it would go on with the the middle daughter to be blessed um, because I didn't want her blessed either there's our famous there. <laughs> train. Sorry about that. That's <laughs> oh, all right. Um, so there's always these questions, you know. And another thing in my mind, my mom had always told me to ne never to go to the temple until I was ready, because it's a strange place, Susie. And so then, as my adult mind begins to form, and these I have all these questions, I, what do I do with? What am I supposed to do with that? And so ultimately, Earl. I would say back then in my mid to late 20s that God became very flaky. This Heavenly Father that I had trusted and loved oh. had just turned into this flaky, um, I, I didn't know what to believe. You know, yeah. I'd read in the New Testament this, these warnings, you know, the warning about watch out for um, false prophets and teachers, right. Right? right? Those are the red words and I'm supposed to believe them. And, and I, I would think, okay, so what other churches have prophets? Okay, well, um, Islam, okay, and then I think some other crazy, <laughs> right? And I'd go, and then I'd go to sacrament with these questions whirling in my head, and um, I just, I'd look around, and I'd just think, oh, what is wrong with me? P are you, you, you all believe this? <laughs> You're but questioning whether everyone else is. It, does anyone else, you know, have any <laughs> questions? But again, you just don't talk about it, so you keep trying harder, Yeah. trying to be good, right? Yeah, and I know you had an interesting experience in a Relief Society lesson once. Can you share that? Uh, I can. Um, well, I need to back up a little bit. Okay. There, there came a point where I, I thought, okay, I, um, I need to read this Book of Mormon, because that wouldn't be right to not. Right. And so... And pray about I, it. And pray about sure. it. And so my prayer was, I said, Lord, I'm in the temple tomorrow if this is your true church. And if it's not, I need you to show me who you are, your will. Not my neighbors, not my friends, not my family. family. Just show me who you are in your will. And that was my prayer throughout reading um, the Book of Mormon. So when I got done reading the Book of Mormon, again, you're hopeful. I'm hopeful for a burning, a, yeah. a, a you're conviction. You're reading it with purpose. Right, that to, this is gonna yeah. be, and um, all I got was, it's not who I am. And then l the word love just circled everywhere. And as that had zero significance to me, not until I was saved many years later. Wow. But after reading it, um, and again, timeline wise, this is late 20s, so a um, couple months had maybe gone by, three months, and I'm in Relief Society. The, and the lesson is on um, deceit. And my next door, my neighbor from across the street is sitting next to me. And they're, you know, having people share about what is deceit. And I get in my head, I'm like, deceit is that I don't think I believe any of this. And for two years, even um, prior, I just, I wouldn't read anything from the doctrines just the Bible. So if I went visiting teaching, I wouldn't read from the, their doctrines and just and from the Bible. Just from the Bible. Yeah. And when I did a, a lesson, I don't know what the calling was. I I wouldn't read. I would only read the Bible. And I got caught on to and called out without actually calling me out. They just in a meeting, a, a big meeting at my own home. Really. They said, um, some. They said we have a someone in our midst. <laughs> who is um, we're not sure is who, who, we're not sure they believe and they're they're not fully giving the lessons they're just reading from the Bible how, right. how shameful <laughs> but that's what you think yeah, and so true. at that point I'm like oh dear I'm 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 caught I'm, I'm caught <laughs> I'm out. 
Um, and so back to that Relief Society morning. So the deceit, I'm, uh, I'm looking around and listening to these be beautiful women share these things that I think, oh, that it, that, that's nothing. Because I don't, I don't think I believe any of this. And as I'm sitting there, um, it's, this is one of those stories again where it would take years in the Bible to show that sometimes God does speak with a voice. And so um, the lesson's almost over and I, I, hear, um, I hear an audible voice tell me that, it, um, Suzanne, it's time to leave. And wow. my neighbor heard it. She heard something because she grabbed my leg and she said, what was that? Oh my goodness. And I just sat there stunned. We both had goosebumps. Yeah. And I had heard, Suzanne, it's time to leave. She had not heard anything but the sound that this, it, it was kind of a booming. <laughs> and I just said, I, I don't know. I, I, I don't know what that was. Because again, how do you say, well, I think God just <laughs> told me that I'm supposed to, the, you just can't do that. Did you ever talk to her later? No. Tell her? <laughs> no. No, maybe she'll, yeah, but, maybe she'll hear this. Yeah, maybe. So after that, I got up and I, I, I thought, oh, that, that, was, that was weird. That, that was probably nothing. Shake it off. I went to Sunday school. They handed me a little piece of paper to read at the beginning of the class, um, something to the effect that um, what if the morning paper... Uh, the the headlines was um, the Book of Mormon is true, and you know all. They found and I all read, the archaeology or something. Right. And, yeah. and I read that, and I just knew that voice was the Lord saying it was time. And I handed it. I went to someone. I said, "Could you please read this for me?" I went and got the girls. Um, at the time, the middle one was three, and the oldest was seven, eight something or no three but she'd be 11 so sorry she'd be 11 so yeah. and we just we left and we never we never went back and it would be a decade of of uh Deepak Chopra is that how you say his name yeah something, something like Chopra, that Chopra. Chopra. <laughs> and uh Wayne Dyer so you hadn't found Christ even at this point no I mean you knew I, again I love Jesus yeah I think what I've, I've heard it best put by someone as of recent that it's Jesus is under their umbrella so I would yeah. have to say, in this period, I didn't, again, you're, I'm afraid to go talk to a lot of people, although there's a couple people who are Christians. One invites me to um, Washington Heights, and I go a couple times. But we, we end up um, just, le we end up leaving the state. I get a job offer. And my dear sweet husband let me know that this would be the downfall of his work, but he was still willing. Yeah. And um, we moved because I just, I just wanted out of, Utah for a, a minute and God in his amazing ways knew um, some things coming down the pike and I got really sick and oh. so we came back to Utah and um, at that point I went um, took about a year to get well we built a home but I went around and prayed around the churches um, in Brigham yeah. And that's how we ended Christian up churches. Christian churches. Because believe it or not, I wanted a, a smooth transition, yeah. especially for the oldest. Right, for the kids. Right. Yeah. And um, so in the midst of that, it's a, it would be a decade before uh, wow. going to a Christian church. Yeah. Um, Jesus, I uh, love him, love him, so I think. Um, lots of New Age, and a lot of Oprah, um, every <laughs> self-help book, Dr. Phil. And, and I could do those things, right? Um, I was fascinated by psychology yeah. and human behavior. And so, um, well, did, but you know, it was funny, Earl, because none, none of it helped. Go ahead. Well, when, well, just when did you finally, we've only got a couple of minutes, oh, okay. believe it or not, but yeah. I'm just wondering, did you, when did you finally come to realize that, the Jesus, that Jesus had been talking to you all this time? And You know, Jesus saved me in um, March of 2006. And uh, believe it or not, I was watching Mr. McCraney, and oh. I thought, oh my land, wow, there's a guy here in this state doing this. And, and so I went to the computer and I pulled it up, and then all of a sudden it was just this, you're not alone. Wow. And weeping and tears for several days, and things like falling off, not knowing, I, I don't think without 
Christ in you that you have any idea that you are in bondage because the world teaches so you true. it's so self yeah everything's about you and when Jesus saved me it became about what Jesus did Wow. and what he did is he died on the cross for my sin and I didn't know what my sin was when I'd say I, he atoned until yeah. that day and then he showed me my pride and my feminism and my arrogance and and then mostly he showed me that I that I had that I had never known him I had loved him but I did not know him not and that I had re-crucified him over and over so he'd been calling and I think there's a lot of um, LDS people I think there's people all over that he's calling yeah. and we just need to have well, the courage to ask well they think they love Jesus the sure. Mormons they think they have a rela or a, a relationship, but certainly trust or mm -hmm. believe in Christ, but they just don't know His voice, do they? Right. And so, <laughs> I guess the Bible means different to you now. Grace and works. He opened my eyes. Just like all the stuff it talks about the, those born againers that I made fun of. Yeah. They were right. And the cross. Now. And the cross <laughs> is right. That's. That was yeah. the means to um, the whole the whole plan. Well, I I just have a I know you have a heart and a love for the LDS people, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. You want them to to know the truth and to open their eyes. What do you think it would take to to bring that out? You know, people like you, Earl. You think, and, and you, and and <laughs> and, and the these shows, Praise God. right, right. Yeah. Um, at least make make them think that maybe they're not alone in some of their thoughts if they've had these promptings right. over the years. Right. It, it's and it's not that you can't leave it alone. That yeah, Mormonism. Right, it's right. That, that that Christ in you won't let you because you love them so much. Well, there's such a joyous message. Yeah. There's a message of hope and uh, freedom. Freedom. Mm -hmm. And you felt the shackles. I, I saw you demonstrate that a yeah. little. The shackles just kind of fall off, don't mm -hmm. they? Well, Suzanne, our time's gone. You've, uh, it's a wonderful story. I, I just know people are going to relate to this in some different ways. And appreciate you coming and sharing your story. And we'll get to hear from your good husband, Russell, next week. And uh, yeah. so thank you for coming. And Thanks, Earl. Appreciate you watching tonight. And as I've said several times, you're probably following the gospel of Joseph Smith and not the gospel of Jesus Christ. Good night. <laughs>